Well, that is a stutter start. We had brought the KRT hives over to my facility yesterday. KRTP is our province's tech transfer program. Derek and Daryl, they picked the colonies up, about 71 of them, and brought them up to my honey house. I'm going to custom winter them uh, this winter. So I loaded them onto the cement pad and I figured, oh, here's a start. So I went and picked up a load, not a load, but a yard of nukes from off to the side and brought it up to the uh, winter shed. It's going to move them in today. But I'm looking at the projected forecast and we're seeing double digit weather, maybe middle to the end of the week, into the weekend. So no use getting in any hurry yet to move them in. Yet they uh, will be getting up and flying regardless. Just running on the tones of last year where it was such cold, cold October. I'd moved half my apiary inside and then we had like three days of 25 degree weather uh, into November, so it was like running off those tones. I think I'll just hold for the next three, four, five days and see what the forecast shows us. That long range, of course, provides that whip of a foot of snow after the warm weather passes. Is that going to materialize? Who knows? But I don't have refrigeration, so I don't want to have to push my bees through a hot winter shed when they could be out and flying. So off to other types of projects on the farm instead of wasting my time moving bees in and out. So I decided I'll take this yard and I'll put it back down. This is the consolidation yard. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will be ten yards I have in this little spot, this little location. Just bringing my out yards in a little bit closer. So, well, first off, out of the wind, it's been a terribly windy fall again. But, uh, you know, in all those odd locations, consolidate them here, then I can grab them uh, right smartly. And yeah, there you go. Stutter start. I just finished spreading these hives out on the pad here. We're going to get some nice flight weather, so instead of stacking them in the corner all together, if we see some flight weather, you might as well let them fly and this will just help orientate a little bit. My continual attempt to fuss with my bees. These aren't my bees. These are the KRTP bees that are being wintered in my facility. There's 71 of them or something like that here. These are all donated from beekeepers across Manitoba. Donated into some research projects, some applied beekeeping research projects. The applied project we have going this year is spinning off some of the major work being done at the University of Manitoba right now in regards to oxalic acid and CO2 work. And some of the applied questions from that program, you have all this study, all this information, all this brilliant, exciting stuff that comes from these studies, right? And the question is, that is really cool. How does that apply to me as a beekeeper? So the university is using this tech transfer program of ours to kind of tap into that spirit, taking some of the information, some of those questions that are being derived from the study and applying it down to the beekeeper level to see exactly how it can be used proactively to help us manage our bees. Because ultimately these studies that's exactly what they're meant to do, is to be to provide the information for the beekeepers. It's just there's a disconnect in regards to is it actually being translated down to that beekeeper level where we can use it. So that is what we're, we applied a small trial on these colonies. And one of the questions is, with all the application devices we have available to us, throughout all the types of weather conditions, exactly how much of that product is getting onto the bees you know what is that treatment dose how much is getting in there when it's cold how much is getting in there when it's warm how much is getting on those bees throughout all these varying types of devices 
specifically related to our Manitoba climate. We can have this information come to us from California or Norway, you know, or Florida or Georgia, but how does that apply, even, you know, Alberta? How does this apply to Manitoba beekeepers in our Manitoba circumstances here? So that's what we're trying to find out. I think Derek, Derek, our lead, I think he's done a good job on developing the technique and the process to uh, run the trial. Uh, he's run it this year, and with those results, we're going to take it to next year and carry forward with it and just continually assess, bring more information to the plate to the beekeeper in a way that we can actually use it. That's exactly what these tech transfer programs are all about. Just transferring some of that knowledge and research down to the beekeeper level. I am so excited to be able to have a project like this in Manitoba. This is what, this is one of the main reasons why I become so involved with the association is to bring this kind of stuff to our industry to answer those questions that I have in the back of my mind and complement all those conversations that we have with beekeepers around that table and this is just the beginning of it you know just there's so much of this energy and ambition of beekeepers we just need some kind of a mechanism to channel it into something something of use projects or study or programs you know we have a, a bee health monitoring program going on right now too just one of the one of those spin-offs hygienic testing i mean where do we want this puppy to go right well she's a start